Hello everyone and welcome to the Extreme Tech channel. In this video I will uh, show you how to do the 6G welding test or also known as a this one is F6F6 which stands for Max TIG. For this test I'm going to use 70S2 TIG filler wire. So I'll be working on a 2 inch pipe. 2500 OD which stands for outside diameter we're going to prep both pieces I like to use a carbide bit for cleaning internal preparation and from the outside we already got prep bevel so I'm just going to remove the mouse scale and make sure so I got a feather edge as this is what I like to have on all my pieces especially when I'm doing TIG I like feather edge especially for TIG welding some people like clamp, I don't. Okay, we're gonna put it together. I like to use the angle iron, it's good for the lineup or to prevent any misalignment. So the gap is going to be 532. That's what I like to use, especially in TIG. I like bigger gap. As long as you have enough room to wiggle one eight rod, that should be fine. Okay, we're gonna do the bridge tax. I'll put one at 12 o'clock. And now flip it around and put another one at 6 o'clock. And the third one is going to be on the side, 3 or 9 o'clock, it doesn't really matter. Okay, now I got three tacks. The gap is looking alright, seems even all the way around. There is no high low inside. Even if you got one, it'll be a minimal. Okay, I will put this piece that it's already got 45 degrees angle there. I'm just gonna tack it, top and the bottom. So the way how most people likes to do it, put a text so you got 12, 3 and 9 o'clock. But in this case, I like to do 12, 6 and 9 o'clock. So we got one side open, and it's going to be from 6 o'clock all the way up to 1 o'clock. Okay, as you can see how we got the right side here. So I'm going to start at uh, 5 o'clock and I will wiggle my torch inside a groove and I will do the dipping technique on this side. Alright, now I'm going to connect here. As soon as I connect and create a solid, solid route for beginning, I'm just going to start dipping sides. Go left, right, left, right, dip, dip, dip. I don't know if you noticed in all my previous videos, but this is a technique that I like to use, especially on the root pass. Learned that a long time ago, that dipping technique. I never had any issues with that, especially on the root. This is how you get, this is how you have good, nice control over your weld pad. And you'll be 100% sure that you'll burn those edges. There's a lot of uh, people with uh, different habits or different techniques. Some people like to do a constant feed. It's all about the experience and the skills. You know, sometimes with constant feed, you can have, uh, you can just stick weld on the edge, not actually burn the edge. You can just stick it, like glue it. I know a couple of cases where people had a welding repair, and that was the case. Okay, this is the root, looks good to me. I like a little bit heavy root, especially on a two inch welding test, just to prevent bigger suck back if I got, so I just got enough meat inside. Okay, now I'm gonna cut those tacks at the bottom and start going on the left side. Always grind stop, stop starts. Okay, as you can see here, that's what I did. So at the bottom part, actually at five o'clock, I'm going to start, it's going to be free handed. I like to keep that rod inside the root and just to do it like uh, back feeding. And just move your torch to burn those edges nice and slowly. While you keep feeding your rod, make sure to burn both edges. At the bottom part, of course, you'll be doing the constant feeding technique. So once you go up to eight or nine o'clock, that's where you start pulling it out slowly and start dipping technique on the edges. And then you just keep progressing up all the way up to 12 o'clock. 
as you can see there's nothing wrong with that root as I said I like it a little bit heavier yeah I'll cut that tack and grind that stop start point Okay, now I'm going to do dipping technique on this side and mingle my torch inside the grill to put the to put to put that root in. You know, you you want to go dipping technique on the side, especially you want to prevent uh, to put a like excessive root. Just want to have issues later. That's why dipping technique works good perfect so you can actually see it and you can control the amount you're actually depositing in so I don't know did I mention but for this route I'm running around 120 to 120 amps tungsten is 1.8 and my cup is size 8 always keep in mind to keep your tungsten sharp it's really important that's how you get better control over a well puddle on a top on the tines make sure to go at least half inch over that's how we get a nice good connection with the existing route Okay, now make sure to clean root pass using grinder or buffing wheel, whatever. As you can see, I got a two thick torch set up for this test. It is a 150 amps torch and gets really hot. Even just after putting root in, she's, she's already start mel melting. You can smell that rubber. Okay, I cleaned that uh, root pass and now I'm gonna start this is my hot pass and I'm using 1 8 rod. Usually I like to do 332, but in this case I go with 1 8. As I got, uh, as I said before, I got a little bit heavier roots, so even if I got bigger sack back, it shouldn't be a big, uh, big of the deal. As I want to fill it up faster. Yeah, make sure to melt nice and easy both sides. Stretch that puddle. Okay, now we got that. Pass in, okay. Run buffing wheel between your passes, it's a good habit to clean between passes. Okay, now we're gonna do one more uh, single fillet pass from side to side. This test is time limited, it's only three and a half hour test, so I really don't have much time as I got to speed up. Okay, now we finished fill pass in the middle. Now we're gonna start filling sides. So I'm gonna start on the at the top side. I'm going 160 amps here. You can go even higher if you if you can if you got better equipment. Sure, go ahead. You can use 200 amps or even more. Better equipment is uh, that's a game changer, especially on a thick welding, especially if you're running uh, water cooled torches. Okay, now I'm on the other side. And now when the top pass is done, I'm gonna do one at the bottom. As you can see all this grind stop starts here, as I said, especially if you're using tea torches I do, without remote. So every time uh, I want to stop, I had to do a hard pull. That's when it leaves those craters and uh, impurities. So yeah, it's very, it's crucial to clean it. Like even if you got 532 rod, that'll be even better. So you can probably fill it out faster. But here I unfortunately only got one 8 rod, that's the biggest rod I got.
Okay, now I got both sides done. I will start filling uh, one in the middle. Especially at the bottom part, as you can see it needs more uh, material here. Okay, this is a little bit speed up, so the middle part is done. Now we'll start filling the sides again. So I'm going to start at the top again. I'm going all the way up to the edge. Try not to go over the edge if you can. But it doesn't really matter because you will cover the capping pass and imperfection you have. And it doesn't have to be perfect guys, it's only well test. The quality is the most important thing here, not so aesthetic really. I mean as long as you don't have any undercuts or really some kind of big bad failure but that should be fine. Okay the top part is done, I'll do the same thing at the bottom. So the same thing at the bottom, go all the way up to that edge. Try to put material, especially on the bottom, as much as you can. Okay, the bottom part is down. Now we're gonna do in the middle. I'm going a little bit wider here as I can, just uh, to put more material, just to fill it up more, especially that bottom because you know the gravity. Okay, I still have some gap to fill. We're gonna fill it to flush. Now at this point, as uh, you're already close to flush, it doesn't have it doesn't have to be in some kind of order. Just uh, fill all that in one spots you got. So you're gonna get nice solid base for capping. All we need is nice even weld all the way around. It'll be easier to cap, clean every time between passes, to remove uh, all impurities. One thing about this 70s2 TIG rod is uh, lots of companies are using it, as it is cheap, and it's really hard to control that uh, puddle once your piece is uh, getting really hot, as this is really dirty rod. That's why most of the welders like 70s6 as it got more silica inside and it's easier to control and it's very clean rod. Okay now I'm working on a first capping pass. Try to keep that uh, straight edge even at the piping side. Little suggestion if you can you can use maybe 332 for capping as I'm using 1.8 rod here. So I'll probably have a little bit heavier cap. Same thing for the second pass cap. Try to maintain nice and even steps. Keep the same even gap when you overlap you over your first pass. And for the third pass, it is uh, the most important pass in any multi-pass welding process. The last pass is always the crucial one, as it is cherry on the top. Even if you got any imperfection between your passes, it will fix the image of the final appearance, but you have to focus and have a good control over your puddle. Same steps, straight edges on both sides of the weld. Because any little missteps, especially on the TIG, it will show at the end. You'll see it. Definitely you don't want to have a Saza blade looking edge on your weld. But as I said before, don't worry too much about aesthetic as this is a welding test. It's all about quality. This is band test, it's not x-ray. Okay, as I said, it's a little bit heavier cap, but 
I should be fine. Use a buffing wheel or a grinder just to remove any marks if you got. If you got any undercut, use the file and remove it before you call the weld examiner to check your weld. As you can see, my T-gloves really shrinks a lot. That's when uh, you're in a rush and lazy to put a chain grip around the pipe. As I was trying to make it down on time and it is time limited test. Just leaning my hand on top of that pipe and that's what you got. Ah, that's okay. That's normal. That's what we welders do. Play with fire and you get burned. Okay, here we got four pieces that have been already cut. So you have to clean it, remove the cap and root. You can use flapper or grinding disc for that. I'll just use one eight disc I got, it's already on my grinder. Just don't go too deep or chase anything if you if you got as they can fail you. Easy for that. Round that edges all the way around. It's really important to round the edges to prevent the notch effect. Go ahead and remove the root, same thing, don't go too deep, just make it flash. Yeah, it's all clean, edges are rounded. Well, now it's time for Mr. Welding Examiner to perform band test. On the Showtime machine, or Heartbreaker machine, depends how many people like to call it. Okay, we got two roots and two phase bands here, and here we go. And all four pieces are here, they all look good. You know, if you got any opening more than 1 8, it's uh, considered as a fail, but not today. I well, hope you guys like this video. Support this channel with subscribe and like as always and see you in the next one.